Last time on Dragon Ball Super, Gohan saved the future. With the help of his other self, a fusion was created like no other, and this fusion took down the evil Zamasu for good. Now a new challenge comes ahead, the threat of the Tournament of Power. With future Trunks joining the ranks, will they be able to save the universe? Finale, on to further knowledge. What if Gohan continued training part four? Our heroes, Gohan and Trunks, trained for the upcoming tournament. Gohan has no idea what to expect, but knows that there will be many challenges ahead. Slowly, he has been able to come up with a team, but there's still one more spot left to be filled. Though he wants to have Roshi, Yamcha, and his friends on the team, he realizes that there has to be other strong, powerful beings out there. And though he trusts his friends, he doesn't want to put the weight of the universe in their shoulders. So he goes to a few planets he knows, including planet Namek. There, he tries to find a strong Namekian. Him and Piccolo talk to a bunch of Namekians, and though there are some quite powerful ones, none of them reach the heights they want. They instead go over to Muri's house and ask if they can just meditate for a little, try to sense key, and find if there's anyone out there to help. And to their surprise, they find a strong, really powerful presence. It's a remote planet, Vampa. Piccolo thinks that it could just be some kind of creature in there, but Gohan thinks otherwise. This key seems familiar. It's the same feeling he feels when his anger spikes. The two heroes head over to the planet, where they are attacked by giant spiders. To their surprise, they hear someone yell out a name, and before they know it, a Saiyan. Broly punches the spider away. More spiders gang up on them, but him, Gohan, and Piccolo defeat them easily. After things calm down, Gohan stares at Broly. He couldn't believe the amount of power coming from him, and couldn't believe that more Saiyans were still alive. Paragus introduces himself, telling them a little bit about him. Piccolo doesn't trust these Saiyans, at least not the older one. Gohan is surprised to hear that King Vegeta is the one who had sent them away, and even more surprised to see that they're both alive. Gohan realizes the amount of power that this Broly has, and asks Paragus that in exchange for letting them go to Earth and stay there, Broly would be allowed to compete. Paragus agrees, reluctantly, even after being told that Prince Vegeta would be there. He decides to stay quiet, to not cause any trouble, at least not until after the tournament. After all, if it was this serious, then they would need Broly. They return to Earth, where Bulma provided them with a capsule home. Paragus gritted his teeth at the sight of Vegeta, but the Saiyan Prince did welcome them. Vegeta was being a lot more docile than usual. This is because Bulma is pregnant and about to give birth. Paragus begins to plan something, but remains mostly isolated, only going out when Gohan and Broly go out to train, to make sure that he doesn't go too wild. Gohan hates the idea of this color that Paragus has, and is sure that there's no way it can get that bad. He discusses with Broly, and they find out that they have a lot in common. Broly doesn't necessarily enjoy fighting the way Goku or Vegeta do. He's a Saiyan, so it's in his blood, but he relates a lot more to Gohan. A lot of Broly's training with Gohan consists of Ki and meditation, trying to contain the incredible power that he has. And a lot of it works, and Paragus realizes this, as even when it seems that Broly is going to go crazy, he remains calm while his power increases. Paragus is relieved, but a little worried that Broly might not be under his control. Gohan also utilizes a lot of the stuff he wrote down on his book to teach Broly. Basically, a trial run. The final few pages of the volume end with the description of Broly's training, and how Ki could manage to calm him down. Trunks also joins in in a lot of the training, and the three Saiyans get along. Just like in the original, Whis helps Bulma give birth, and Vegeta is allowed to enter the tournament. Goten and Trunks really want to enter the tournament, but there's only one spot left to be filled. Gohan has been training with them for a very long time, Time, even developing a new form of martial arts with swords. Their idea is to fuse right as the tournament starts. This way, they will have at least 30 minutes before defusing and being disqualified. The team is set. Gohan, Trunks, Piccolo, Vegeta, 18, 17, Krillin, Tien, Mighty Mask, and Broly. Trunks feels uncomfortable working with the androids, so it was Gohan's idea to have Trunks and himself be the ones to recruit them, to have Trunks easen up on them a little. After realizing that Seventeen has a family and a lot of people he loves, Trunks relates to him in the form of Mai, so he's happy to have him as an ally. Right before the Grand Priest announces the tournament to begin, they fuse. And so, it starts. 
Broly sticks with Gohan, confronting Kale and Caulifla. Kale goes berserk and battles Broly. Gohan realizes the similarity in their power and tries to break it off. But he can't. Gohan had the controller just in case and he was about to press it as he watched Broly's eyes go blank. Broly was on the defensive, he didn't want to hurt Kale that badly, but he also needed to defend himself. That's when Kale grabbed onto Broly's collar, ripping it off and launching him down. All of the universes remained quiet as Broly stood up with a golden aura, turning into a Super Saiyan. Every punch between Kale and Broly shook the arena, and the energy that expanded from them began to destroy the stance. It seems like they disappeared from reality, just to reappear as the sky ripped open. But Broly was stronger than Kale punching her down and beating on her. Gohan did what he could, rushing towards Broly and grabbing him from the back, holding him tight, telling him to calm down that this isn't him. But Broly wouldn't stop. Trunks rushed in too, putting a hand on the shoulder, then Krillin, Gotenks, everyone. All of them had their hands on Broly's back, telling him that it's okay. And Gohan finally said, to remember his training. There was a sparkle in Broly's eye as he began to calm down. Khalifa protected Kale from the punches as Broly kept going, but when they slowed down, she looked back and saw Kale smiling at her. Looks like protecting her and the words from Universe 7 helped Kale calm down as well. Broly remained a Super Saiyan, but a lot more in control. The tournament would continue, but Kale and Khalifa, along with Universe 7's team, rushed away from each other. The fights continued, and slowly, members of each team were defeated. Gotenks confronts Jiren, and both Gohan and Vegeta are forced to defend him. Though they manage to get a few shots in, they'd stand no chance against him. They simply retreat, along with Gotenks. A rematch between Gohan and Hit happens, where the two push each other to their very limit. Hit wasn't going to fall as easily as before, but Gohan had advanced his techniques even further, and he was able to knock down Hit. Despo confronted Gotenks, and the kids used everything in their arsenal to fight him. Without having actual swords to use, they were forced to instead use key swords, similar to the ones that Goku Black used. They held their own for a little bit, but Despo's speed was too much for them. They were at the very edge of the ring, and Despo was coming in with one final attack. But when his fist was going to make contact with Gotenks, they defused. Goten and Trunks stuck their feet out, making Despo trip in between them and kicking him in the back of the head out of bounds, just as both of them were teleported away, disqualified. Trunks and Vegeta used their forces together to defeat Topo. His incredible power was throwing them around like ragdolls, but a father-son Gallic gun from either side fried Topo. In the end, Trunks rushed in, throwing him up in the air and firing a blast. The Heat Dome attack. Topo was knocked down. Trunks also battled Kaba, who was very surprised to see the son of Vegeta. He was excited to see how strong he has gotten. Trunks ended up respecting Kaba quite a bit, and definitely had his blessing to train under Vegeta, if Vegeta ever actually wanted to do that. In the end, Kaba saved Kale from being knocked down, but he got knocked down in her place. Seventeen and Trunks both teamed up, running up Alnilas' arm to kick him in the face, but he was so big that he wouldn't fall down. The two of them were forced to punch him down, being knocked out of bounds alone with with Anilaza. Similarly to the manga, Gohan battled Kefla. He enjoyed fighting with her, and they proved to be a real challenge, but they didn't stand a chance once Gohan transformed into his ultimate blue state. Gohan managed to defeat them both, knocking them out of the ring while their Butara broke. Gohan, Vegeta, and Broly were the only ones left for Universe 7, facing off against Jiren. Gohan and Vegeta tried their best, and even this newly discovered blue evolution was nothing against him. Gohan tried to remember everything in his book. He had been practicing, trying to learn what Whis had told him, about a special technique known to the gods. One about his body moving on its own, but nothing. And though he seemingly tapped into that technique a few times, his hair sparkling silver for just a split second, he couldn't maintain it. Jiren threw both Vegeta and Gohan out of the ring. Broly was able to catch Vegeta's foot, keeping him from falling down, but it was too late for Gohan. Broly tried to reach out, but Gohan looked at Broly with a smile, winking at him as he was teleported away. Vegeta was quite hurt. He probably wouldn't be able to defeat Jiren, but Broly, he could. Vegeta yelled at Broly to listen and remember what Gohan taught him. Remember that he has friends now, a whole lot of them, and that his father is waiting for him back on Earth. This is now his power to control. Broly smirked and pushed himself towards Jiren. He anticipated Broly's attack, blocking in front of him. What he didn't expect was Vegeta coming up right behind him and slamming his palm against Jiren's back, pushing him forward and leaving him open for an attack. Vegeta rolled away as Broly's chest came in contact with Jiren and exploded, sending Jiren hurling out. The gray alien tried to stop himself, but Broly was right on his tail, grabbing his leg and throwing him down. Broly fell along with him, and thus, the winner was Vegeta, wishing for every universe that was destroyed to be restored. 
Following the events of the Tournament of Power, Trunks and Mai returned to their universe. Ready to start a rebuilding, Beerus warned them to never return again, otherwise there would be a lot of consequences for the time travel. It was a fateful goodbye between all of them, particularly between Trunks, Gohan, and Broly. He had spent a lot of time with them, and really got to appreciate them both. He told Broly to make sure to keep up his training, and to continue to try to control it. Broly promised to. However, not all was well, as the next adventure would begin. One day, while training between Vegeta, Gohan, and Broly, they felt a strange presence come down to Earth. It was the Galactic Patrol, and they had been looking for Majin Buu. However, they were told by Gohan that he was defeated a long time ago. To their surprise, Kaioshin arrived explaining that he knows why they need Boo, and that the Grand Supreme Kai passed along with them. However, the great hero of Earth, Gohan, would be able to help. Gohan didn't like being volunteered without his consent, but he knew that if the universe was at stake, he'd be willing to help. Before leaving, he asked Mr. Satan how the book publishing was going, and he said that things were almost ready to ship out, and that he hoped that he'd be back for the book signing. Gohan smirked and promised to. Before departing, Kaioshin took Gohan aside, telling him that he was very proud of the man he'd become, and that after such a long time training together, he knew he was ready for anything. So, he presented something to Gohan, the Potara. Kaioshin smirked at Gohan, telling him that he was an honorary Kaioshin at this point, and this would help them if in trouble. Gohan smiled and hugged Kaioshin before he teleported away. Hey kids, don't go away. We'll be right back. I hope you guys are enjoying the video, and if you like the stuff I do, there's a way you can support the channel. By clicking the membership button, you will be able to see various tiers. Each one of them has some rewards. My personal favorite ones are the Super Saiyan hair badges that adorn your name in comments and live streams on my channel. The longer you stay a member, the larger the power up. So if you like the stuff I do and feel like supporting me in some way, be sure to check out the membership. Anyways, back to the show. Show. As it turns out, Moro, an extremely powerful galactic patrol prisoner, had escaped. He was headed to Namek. Broly was excited to see another planet, as well as travel the universe a bit more. While Vegeta couldn't really care less, he just wanted to get this over with. Paragus, who had gone with them along with Broly, is suspicious about this whole situation. In fact, he's actually kind of upset that the Galactic Patrol never did anything against Frieza while he was ruling over planet Vegeta. He stood silently in the back, but focused in on Vegeta, clenching his fist. Finally, the team arrived at Namek, where Moro attacked, absorbing the energy of the whole world and killing Murray in the process. Moro stands as the greatest threat to the universe, but as the heroes arrive, Gohan notices that Paragus is gone. He wonders where he is. Mira says that perhaps he stayed in the ship. It didn't really matter, they would find him eventually. But as the ship zooms across the Namek sky, it's shot down. Gohan, Vegeta, and Broly save everyone from the fall, but they're surprised to see just what happened. It wasn't Moro that shut them down, it was Paragus, who was now standing next to the goat monster. Moro put a hand on Paragus' shoulder, thankful to now have him as an ally, and dumping some of his power onto him. Vegeta asked why this was happening, and Paragus said that this was finally his chance to get revenge for being cast away with Broly. Paragus tells Broly to join him, but the Saiyan stands in place. It didn't matter anyways. Paragus and Moro pointed their arms out, shooting Key Blast at the three. They dodge out of the way, and Vegeta goes in for an attack. However, he's intercepted as Broly stands in the way. He won't allow them to hurt his father. They don't have time for this. They try to reason with Broly, but nothing is getting through to him. The fight commences, but Broly doesn't really stand a chance against two Saiyans. At least, not in his current state. Moro realized this, but also noticed that Broly's mind was weak, and that with a little bit of a push, he could break him. So, he moved his hand, using his magic to whisper thoughts into his mind. Broly enters into his berserk state instantly, and slowly Planet Namek begins to crumble around them. Paragus is afraid, and he presses the button, electrocuting Broly and bringing him down. But Moro yells at him, telling him that he almost had him. What Paragus was unaware of was that Moro was taking Broly's power. This one Saiyan had more power than a dozen planets, and it was the most delicious meal he had had in many years. So Moro stops Paragus, killing him. As Broly watches this, he explodes in rage, now fighting on a doomed planet. Continues to take more and more energy, but even with that happening, Broly's still able to beat down on the Saiyans. Vegeta gets thrown down, while Gohan is being pummeled. 
Gohan tries to remember everything he's ever written, every lesson he ever learned. He thinks of his many masters, Piccolo, Goku, Kaioshin, Whis, and in his mind, he remembers his book, pages flipping open onto one of the final notes he wrote down, one that wasn't going to make it into publishing, one that he'd written for himself. The title read, Ultra Instinct. And with that, Gohan's eyes sparkled, his hair turning from blue onto a silvery color. And as Broly went to punch him one more time, Gohan was able to grab onto the arm and throw him down. Gohan continued to dodge a barrage of kicks and attacks from Broly, completely void of thoughts. The only one that came to his head was stopping Broly. After one of the dodges, he pointed his gauntlet at Broly, firing the liquid he made off of Dabara's spit. This petrified Broly's arm, then his other arm. Then his legs! Broly was brought down to the ground. The stone wouldn't last very long, and Broly continued to fire key blasts through his mouth. But Gohan walked right through the blast, putting his hands on Broly's shoulders and simply opening his eyes. The two looked at each other. Broly was about to break through the stone. Gohan told Broly to calm down. That Earth was in danger. This seemed to strike a nerve with Broly. He told Broly to remember everything they had trained for. Remember that Gohan understood what he was going through. This power, it felt uncontrollable, but it wasn't. Remember Kale and how she struggled to maintain control as well. Broly began to understand. For a second, it seemed like Broly was about to explode again. And without much of a choice, Gohan punched Broly in the face, knocking him out. Before he would struggle with his power one more time. Vegeta was just happy that this was over with. But he watched as Moro left the atmosphere. They needed to do something quickly. Mirrors managed to shoot down Moro. But Moro was already one step ahead of him. Having wished for the Galactic Patrol prisoners to be freed. It was chaos all over the Galactic Patrol, and on Namek, ships full of villains began to appear. Gohan and Vegeta were extremely hurt. They weren't sure if they would be able to stand up for very long. The battle against Broly took a lot out of them, and now Moro, who was younger thanks to absorbing Broly's power, stood in front of them, ready to continue the fight. And so it began. Mira said that he'd take care of the prisoners, while Vegeta and Gohan take care of Moro. Though the small villains were easily defeated, Moro was a completely different story. He was way too powerful for any of the Saiyans, and he was going to destroy the planet. Quickly, the team got on a Galactic Patrol ship, heading towards the headquarters, while Moro finished absorbing the rest of the planet, getting ready to depart towards Earth. After seeing Ultra Instinct Gohan, Mirrors thought that it would be a good idea to maybe train him. However, Gohan wasn't the most interested in Ultra Instinct. The way he saw it, his line of training should be the Kaioshin. It should be through his potential unleashed his ultimate state, not the angels. He also whispered to Mira saying that if Beerus was ever willing to, he thought Vegeta would be good in the path of the God of Destruction, and if his father was around, perhaps he would be the angel. But despite all of his complaints, this may be an important factor in defeating Moro. So he entered a different room of spirit and time along with Mira's. In the meantime, the Kaioshin actually approached Broly. He helped Gohan take care of his power, and he thought that perhaps, though Broly was getting there, he just needed a little bit more help. And Vegeta, after seeing Gohan's Kai Kai, the god's version of the instant teleportation, he was tired of Gohan and Kakarot, and he remembered then. Kakarot also had a form of teleportation before he passed. From Planet Yardrat, he would head there. And so, the three Saiyans began their training, apart, yet with a single goal, defeating Moro. Meanwhile, on Earth, the prisoners attacked. The Z Fighters spread out to defeat them. Gotenks in particular got to show off quite a bit. And even when the fusion ended, Goten and Trunks were formidable opponents, even showcasing their newly discovered Super Saiyan 2, each with a sword in hand. Even Videl was part of the team. She had gotten even stronger since the Universe 6 tournament and donned the Great Saiyan Man 2 outfit in place of Gohan. Piccolo was with her the whole time, and he was very proud of her. Before beginning the fight, Videl told everyone everyone that Pan and Bra were the ones they were fighting for. The future of the world. This gave everyone a lot of motivation. But once Moro arrived on Earth, Gohan knew it was time to return home. He teleported over to the Kaioshin planet, where Shin smiled at him, alone with Broly. The two teleported over to Earth, where they watched Gotenks, with a sword in hand, fighting against 7-3. But as he rushed in to seemingly finish the job, 7-3 grabbed him by the face and absorbed his power, throwing him away as he defused. 7-3 grabbed the sword and spun it around. Now he could use the same techniques 
the kids knew. 17, 18, Gohan and Trunks told Gohan and Broly that they would take care of 7-3. Broly and Gohan should take care of Moro and his powered up ally. Broly and Gohan were too much for the escaped prisoner, but Moro was another story. At one point during the fight, Moro realizes 7-3 is done for, so he rushes towards him and absorbs his power. Now he has the ability to absorb the powers of anyone there, and he chooses Broly. Caught by surprise, Broly is brought up against the mountain. With his powers being absorbed, Moro became bulkier, angrier, and his eyes went blank. Now he was the most powerful being on Earth. Gohan had no idea what he could do. Not long after, however, Vegeta arrives with his newly learned techniques from Plan the Yardrat. He seizes the opportunity to take the power away from Moro, slowly spirit fissioning out whatever power he had stolen. But Moro with Broly's power was slowly going crazy, and the Earth wouldn't last for very long. He launched a ginormous key sphere. Vegeta and Gohan had no choice but to teleport to everyone else and take them to the lookout for them to be safe. Once they returned, there was nothing but lava around them. Vegeta yelled back at Gohan to go get at least some sensu beans. Vegeta would try to distract Moro. Gohan and Broly teleported back, thanking Master Korin for a few sensu beans. They went back up, but as Broly was getting ready to return, Gohan stopped him, telling him that he has a plan. Meanwhile, Vegeta's blue evolution tried its best against Moro, dodging the various attacks. That's all he could do for now, each time getting a little closer to taking a bit of his power away. Gohan threw a Patara earring at Broly and smirked telling him that this will combine their powers for a short period of time. This is the technique of the Kais. All of the Z fighters watched in awe as a new power was born, Gohan. Broly. They declared themselves as a new being altogether, Brohan. Before leaving, Videl stops the fusion, clicking open a capsule, and out of it, the Seazord. She threw it over to the new fusion, who smiled at her, and promised to return soon. Brohan spun the sword and looked at it. It was like meeting an old friend. He shot a thumbs up and teleported back into the battle. Vegeta was at the brink of death, being choked, while at the same time taking the energy of Moro. Once he saw Brohan appear, Vegeta looked lifted his arm up and pointed it at him, whatever energy he had collected, shooting back towards the fusion. Moro threw Vegeta to the side, where Brohan gave him a sensu beam. The fusion told Vegeta to watch his back, and to keep taking the energy whatever chance he had. Vegeta told Brohan that they just needed to keep him close to him. The fusion zoomed towards Moro at such speed that the monster couldn't keep up. Moro dodged out of the way of the sea sword, but he recognized it. That was the blade that was once used against him too. The fusion hit the monster with the butt of the sword, just to slice up, cutting one of his horns in half. This simply made Moro upset, but it gave Vegeta the chance to take away a little bit more of his power. Moro seemed to get bulkier as he blasted away through his mouth, but Brohan could do the same, and the mouth beams clashed, exploding, lifting the lava up around them. Moro rushed up to the sky to create a giant key sphere. Miras and Jaco watched from not too far away, standing in their spaceship. Miras had arrived thinking they would need help, but maybe this wasn't the case. When Moro threw down the key sphere, Brohan caught it, but he was being pushed back. This was quite a bit of power. Vegeta helped, and eventually Miras too. Mora thought he had won, but this wasn't the case, as the key ball went right back up and consumed him. It dissipated through the atmosphere, while Moro fell to the ground. Vegeta continued to take the last bit of energy that Moro had. Brohan smirked, turning around to walk away, sword in hand. But Moro wasn't done, and he rushed in right behind him. Brohan simply lifted his sword up, backwards stabbing Moro through the chest. The Caesar was glowing a red color. Moro asked, how? And Brohan explained. Gohan, Trunks, and Goten had been developing a version of martial arts sword fighting that combined Ki with the sword, but in this case, he combined God Ki with it, as Moro disappeared, fading out of existence. Kaioshin, Kibito, Beers, and Whis arrived and stood proudly in front of Brohan, who smiled and patted Vegeta on the back. The fusion undid itself and it was time to return home. Gohan had had many adventures through the years, and all because he wanted to learn more about the universe, about martial arts, and about the incredible people that practice it. And though he was forced to fight a lot more than he wanted, he wouldn't have had it any other way. The book was released to enormous success, and soon martial artists were practicing all over the world. Goten and Trunks eventually started their own sword fighting schools. Krillin and Tien took on the mantle from Master Roshi to teach a whole new generation, and Vegeta continued to train each day for the next time he met Kakarot. Pan made her parents very proud as she began teaching martial arts through a televised online system. And finally, for Gohan and Videl, we find them 10 years later, at the 10th anniversary of the martial arts 
arts book that changed the world. Groundbreaking science. Key control. Gohan pushed his glasses up as he continued signing the books, not even looking up at this point. He had signed at least a hundred, and Videl told him to take it easy, bringing back a few more books for him to sign. But as the next customer stepped up, Gohan asked who this was for, and a familiar voice responded. You're really something, Gohan. I'm so proud of you. Gohan looked surprised, his heart skipping a beat. He looked up and saw a bright halo and an even brighter smile, his father, fulfilling the promise of checking out the book his son was writing. So, have I gotten stronger? And that's where we leave off this story. Thank you so much for watching guys, this was a very special what if to make and I'm glad that it's finally done, I put a lot of effort into it, I know this was one of the most requested ones to finish, so here it is, I'm gonna be finishing another one coming up soon. Also I wanna let you guys know that now me and my friends, plus Ultraman and Geeks for Fun, have started a weekly what if podcast thing, it's on Wednesdays at 7 and we go back and forth between which channel it's hosted on. Episode 1 was on Wednesday and it was on my channel, I will leave the link in the description below for the live stream if you guys wanna check it out. Next one is gonna be next Wednesday on Plus Ultraman's channel, so be sure to get ready for that. Shout out to the Super Saiyan Legend members of the channel, Brian Torres, Rav, and Zachary Croy. Thank you for your constant support. And as always, shout out to the regular Saiyan members of the channel as well. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe. Let's see if we can get this video up to 3000 likes. That would be really awesome, guys. So leave a like if you like how Gohan ended up in this story. The Dragon Ball question of the week this week is, what key technique would you like to learn from Gohan's book? Personally, I'd like to find out a little more about the Kiko Ho, the Tri-Beam. It's such a powerful and awesome technique, I would really love to read up on it. Anyways guys, thanks for watching, and until we meet again, see ya. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Smugstick, unless you want to be destroyed. Lord Beerus, that's hardly fair. But also, don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified when he uploads new videos.